Welcome to a new video from the Building CI CD Pipelines with Jenkins course brought to you by CoraLogix. My name is Valentin Despa, and in this series, you will learn how to build, test, and deploy a Java application to AWS using Jenkins Pipelines. If you have missed any of the previous videos, make sure you check the video description for the full playlist. In this video, you will learn how to create a Jenkins pipeline that runs unit tests and publishes a test report. To achieve this, we'll add another stage, the test stage, to our pipeline. In the test stage, we want to execute the unit test written using the JUnit testing framework and run everything in Jenkins. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new stage. So I'm going to go inside stages and start defining a new stage. I'm going to name that stage simply test. And we're going to have, again, the steps that we need to take. And again, using the shell executor, we are going to use the Maven wrapper. And the Maven wrapper will call the test Maven phase. Again, if you're running Windows, the command will look a bit different. You can use bat to execute that. And with the forward slash, you can call the Maven wrapper and run the test command. In this case, we don't only want to run the tests and to look into the console to see if something has happened, if there are any errors there. It will actually have a report that we can publish. And that report is in an XML file and Jenkins can automatically read that file. We just need to tell Jenkins that we have generated a report. So for that, we're gonna instruct Jenkins that after the execution here is done, so for example, the command here has executed, we can add a post instruction. So it's something that we do after the execution of the job is done, but just before we exit, just before we go to the next stage, if there is one or stop the execution altogether, we can still do some post actions. So that is post. And inside those post actions, we will say that we always want to publish a report. So this is why I'm going to use here this always instruction. And what we want to do always, we always want to have the JUnit report published. And all we need to do here is to specify a path. Now, path to this is relatively easy because you can see here that the tests are located inside the target. And then we have this Surfire reports. And we'll notice here some XML files that we will use. Now, there can be a lot of XML files. So this is why our syntax needs to be a bit different because we don't want to manually add all the files that are there. Just want to add all the XML files that we can find. You can notice that all the files start with test, then there's a name in between, a package name, a class name, and then they'll end in XML. So for that reason, we're going to write something like test dash, and then with the star, we'll say anything that is in between, and then that ends in XML. Not only that, but we just want to look for any folder, and the path to that folder is target. And we have this additional subfolder, Surfire Reports. So I'm going to add that as well. And make sure that you don't make any spelling mistakes here because then the path will be invalid. So this is the main idea with the test stage. We're running the tests. When the tests are executed, these reports will be generated that Jenkins can understand. We just need to tell Jenkins with this post command, with this post instruction, that will always be executed. So we're not interested if the tests, if the commands before failed or were successful, we always want to have the unit tests published. Especially if they fail, we just want to look at them and to understand which particular test has failed. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to commit and simply say that I've added the test stage. I'm going to select commit and push. I'm going to push the changes to GitHub. I'm going to go back to the pipeline and click build now. I'm going to start again the pipeline. This time we should notice that we have an additional stage. So initially the report may not appear and it takes a few runs for it to show up here. So I'm just going to start the pipeline two or three more times and make sure to refresh the page at that stage. 
But after that, you should see that graph appearing. So after two executions, you will see here this test result trend. This blue representation simply means that everything is working properly. Blue is a good thing. Red is a bad thing. You see here that we have a total of two test cases. It's not a lot, but it's definitely enough. So the next step would be to go back in our code, break a test and make sure that this pipeline then will fail and that this report will be updated. The best place to start making changes is inside the source, main, Java. And we have here a service which is called the add service. This is practically the service that is doing the work of adding to numbers. Now, let's say a less experienced developer simply forgets what this code is supposed to do and removes something from it. And for example, we only add A, but will not add B or not assign B to anything. So again, I'm going to commit this, push it and run it again in Jenkins and see what happens. You can now notice that the color of the pipeline has turned red. So something has failed here. And if we go and refresh the page, you will see here that this image here representing the test results are also, they look a bit different. So now we'll see here this red part going up. So from the build number four to build number five, there's an additional error that has occurred there. Now, obviously, if we want to check what's the problem here, we can inspect here the latest test result. And we're able to see which particular test has failed and why. In our test, we had expected two, but we actually got five back. So definitely a difference there. What's super important about testing in general, especially when doing continuous integration and continuous deployment, is to ensure that if the tests need to fail, that they actually fail inside the pipeline. Otherwise, if everything remains green, but things are actually failing in the background, it's definitely not a good thing. So it's always your job to test that not only that things are working well, but also that all the safeguards that you have in place, such as unit testing, will be triggered at the right point when they are needed. I'll let you revert this change and I'll see you in the next video.